All right, welcome back to today's edition of the Sports Max Zone, and we're starting off the discussion with cricket. The West Indies, they suffered a five wicket defeat to Sri Lanka in the second one day international in Palakele earlier on Wednesday, as the host took a winning 2 0 lead in the three match series. It was an encounter which followed a similar pattern to the first ODI, with West Indies slipping to a 58 for 8 in the 16th over before Shilfin Rutherford, who top scored with 80, and Gurukesh Moji with an unbeaten 50, stitched together a 119-run ninth wicket stand for the Caribbean side. The West Indies were dismissed for 189 in 36 overs. When Hindu Hassar Ranga spearheaded the Sri Lankan attack with 4 for 40, with a player of the match Mahesh Tikshana, 3 for 25, and Asita Fernando, 3 for 25, providing support. Well, two early wickets from Alzari Joseph, 2 for 30, and a tight bowling from Gudukesh Moji, 1 for 18, more momentarily set the Sri Lanka chase back at 25 for 2 in the ninth over. But skipper Shea Hope failed to find any penetration from the rest of his bowlers in defense of a pole three as the host easily achieved the target, finishing on 190 for five in 38.2 overs on the back of captain Charith Asalanka's unbeaten 62. Well, the 26-year-old Rutherford commented on how he approached his innings as well as the visitors' performance on in the testing conditions. The surface this today um, was a used surface, so um, I think it's been a bit more than the last game. Um, so um, I think it was just basically um, trying to spend some more time at the crease and you know try and absorb some pressure and and um, you know when the opportunity is given to score, just try and make sure you punch in it. We start well, but you know the ball got wet. Um, it was very tough for the spinners to grip. So I think, you know, it's just finding ways of, you know, going around with the wet ball because, you know, we're gonna ex we, we will expect that in the next game with the, with the rain around. So, you know, it's just about adapting faster and, you know, hopefully we can win the last one. All right, cricket commentator Nikhil Utam Chandani, he joins us via Zoom to discuss the loss and West Indies woes on that tour in Sri Lanka. Good afternoon, Nikhil. How are you doing? Hey, good afternoon, Maria. I'm well. How are you? I'm good, um, minus the fact that we're going to be discussing a second loss in the ODI. Um, let's start by talking about what Shifin Rutherford just said in that clip, Nikhil. He spoke about the wet ball. Um, you were there. Can you um, expand on what he's saying? Is there any truth to that? Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that, Maria. Uh, both games, there's been obviously rain and a shortened game. And that moisture has been retained. I thought tonight the rain finished um, quite early, but the dew factor really set in. So there was a lot of wiping. It probably was less wet today than it was in the first one international. Um, but look, I think the wet ball and wet conditions is something that the West Indies are going to have to deal with. Um, the spinners are going to have to deal with. When you think about the next World Cup, most of the matches are going to be played in the evening time because that's when people are able to come to cricket, when they're able to watch games. So... All teams around the world have to deal with the wet ball. And I appreciate Shea Hope and Sami's sort of mantra, which has been they're not going to make any excuses for the wet ball. They prepared accordingly and they just weren't able to get enough wickets tonight. Yeah, and you know, after the first ODI yesterday, we had Fazir on the show and we were talking about the comments um, that Shea Hope made after the first ODI, right? Because we were analyzing that. And he spoke about, you know, the bowlers getting their line and length right. But today we go out into the field and it appears to me that the press conference will we'll have to say the same thing again because the bowlers didn't get the line and length right just for a few. Yeah, I thought in terms of the bowling effort, Maria, Alzari Joseph and Moti um, continue to show, you know, that they are pretty much, I would say, in the prime of their powers, more so Moti. Alzari still will want to be a bit more consistent. But the problem for the West Indies has been who else? I mean, the fact that the two of them have taken eight of the nine wickets in the series is a big concern. And the middle overs continue to be a problem for the West Indies when it comes to wicket taking. 
And I think they really are missing. You saw what Hassar Engel was able to do after the power play with his leg spin. They've tried to replicate similar, and it's why Sammy's made it so known that he's wanted a leg spinner in his side. Uh, the Hayden Walsh experiment hasn't gone to plan, but when I look at the sort of volume and the build of that West Indies bowling attack, it is so much reliant on our Alzari and Moti to get wickets, and when they're not, you really can't look anywhere else for that genuine wicket taker. So they've got something to think about when they go into the next couple of series. Yeah, and, you know, when we prepare for the show, we read as much reports as we can before we come on set. And one report from Crick Info earlier today described Hayden Walsh Jr.'s performance as underwhelming. What say you? Well, you look at the numbers, you definitely would say so. I mean, he's gone at nine runs and over in nine overs. Um, I do give him some leeway because of that wet ball. It has been very wet here in Sri Lanka. However, it's been disappointing because, you know, 20 wickets in the Super 50, you're expecting him after a two-year hiatus to come back well. And Sami's given him, a, I think, a run now to try to make an impact on the team. But he really is struggling to find that length consistently. And I think he's a confidence bowler. So from the time he's going for boundaries, all of a sudden the pace gets quick, the trajectory is quite flat, and he's not using the pitch enough. Um, but look, the West Indies have got some decisions to make because I don't think you can continue to play a leg spinner for the sake of playing a leg spinner when there's guys like Akil Hossein who hasn't played a one international since the World Cup qualifiers last year. Um, I think he brings a, a unique approach to that West Indies bowling attack because if he's bowling the new ball like what we saw Moti do in this game, then it allows Moti to be that we could take in the middle over. So when the England and Bangladesh series come around in the Caribbean, I'm interested to see if Sami and the selection panel go back to someone like him and, and look for some more wicket-taking options in the middle. They've got a Shamar Joseph in the squad. Maybe his extra pace can come in to the middle overs and he can be that enforcer and, and support Alzari Joseph because... Right now, they're lacking a wicket-taker after Joseph and Moti. Yeah, and let me start, first of all, Nikhil, by saying thanks for joining us here because I know it's after 3 a.m. in Sri Lanka, and I'm not sure if the West Indies' poor performance is preventing you from sleeping or is it that you just <laughs> love the sports max zone so much that you, you have uh, made sure you're awake for this segment. But, but thanks again because I know it's pretty difficult. Um, we've been talking about the toothless nature of the West Indies bowling as you just referenced but but the batting today Nikhil was 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 pretty awful 52 for five when Roston Chase went in the sixth over the ninth over I think it was um how badly did they bat today yeah it's it's an interesting one Lance obviously it was horrific when you look at the score being 58 for eight However, what I saw was, listen, some really quality spin bowling. Uh, when you think about Teet Shana and Hasaranga, guys, in, that, in those conditions, this is a used surface. So you had the 38 over game in the first ODI, and then Sri Lanka trying to hit home on their home advantage, obviously played again on the same surface. I think why I feel a bit better, you look at the shot selection from guys like Athenes and Casey Carty, it wasn't rash. They were simply defending, and, and a lot of times those balls would go on to miss the stumps. But I thought Athenaeus obviously was a bit unlucky. That was the first ball of the spin he faced for the day. Um, Carty probably went back to one that he should have came forward to. Hope and Brandon King, again, you probably feel the, any, the, those deliveries could have easily not been out on another day. But we can't make excuses for the fact that this West Indies batting lineup has struggled against spin. However, what I did see was a commitment to a plan. There was proactive batting here. The Shepherd dismissal being dismissed to the sweep here. And Walsh came out trying to sweep as well. Um, and, and even Casey Carty playing the sweep a bit more often today. I could see that there's been discussions and try to be a concerted effort on how we can play the Sri Lankan spinners a bit better. However, I think what Rutherford and Moti showed is that if there's a bit more situational awareness involved, when Hasarang and Tikshana were done and Asalanka came into the attack, there were more opportunities to score. So they'll reflect on it as there's slight improvements there, but we have a long way to go when it comes to batting against quality spin in conducive conditions. Yeah, and, and how good was the Sri Lankan spin bowling? Because we know there are, there are talented bowlers, Tikshana and uh, Hasaranga and company, but a lot of purchase from the pitch. I saw even Moti getting a lot of turn, big, big turn mm -hmm. from Gurukesh Moti. Not that he's not a fairly big spinner, but 
I, I thought there was some prodigious turn for him in the pitch conditions today. So um, I, I guess the point you are making is that the Sri Lanka spin bowling quality is uh, is is pronounced and uh, aided too by the pitch conditions. And aided by the fact that the West Indies, I think, with first of all an experienced top order when you think about guys like Karthi and Ale Athenes, but I think. This, those conditions are so far into West Indians. I mean, we face turning conditions, but not to that degree. And, I mean, credit to Sri Lanka because they are understanding how to get the best out of their home conditions. So definitely I would agree with you. I mean, Teach Shana had a delivery that turned 8.2 degrees to Roston Chase, and he's someone that is not a huge turner of the ball, as we recently saw in the CPL. So they're understanding, you know, their home advantage and how to win series. They've won every series in Sri Lanka this year in the one international format. I think for the West Indies, it is just continuing to find different ways to play the spin, whether it's the sweep, which we've seen Roston Chase do and other guys try to implement, using the feet, which we haven't seen a lot of, but I know Floyd Reefer, batting coach, is trying to get his batters to do more often. And that's why I think these experiences are good learning experiences. Obviously, I know 58 for 8 is terrible, and West Indian fans would have been woken up miserable. However, I thought the way that Morty and Rutherford rebounded from that. And even, I look at the small things. Between overs 10 and 30 today, they scored 110 runs the West Indies, which is five and a half runs per over. In the first ODI, it was three runs per over. And that's been an area which has plagued them in the past for a number of years. So, to see small signs of intent being shown a bit earlier, like the best teams in the world are doing, I thought that was a big positive. And the way they recovered and Rutherford has been a huge, huge positive from this one international series. Yeah, and Nikhil, from, I started following West Indies cricket a long, long time ago. I, 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 it's been a given that Guyanese tend to play spin better than most other countries in the Caribbean from the days when Borda was the main ground at Georgetown in Guyana for international cricket. And um, I guess maybe from that, that perspective and the culture of Guyanese understanding spin bowling and the conditions uh, in Guyana that would be a little bit different from other places like Barbados and Jamaica. Uh, maybe Moti and um, Rutherford um, were on the back today of having that kind of background as, as, as Guyanese who, who understand batting spin bowling, quality spin bowling, probably more than some of the other islanders. Definitely. I think just starting on Moti Lance, you could see that there was a certain awareness there. Uh, first of all, to play inside the line of the ball that yeah. was not challenging his stumps. That was, first of all, very impressive. Very selective in who he took on, which length he took on as well. But the reason I was disappointed in Walsh and Shepard's dismissal is I understand the plan to sweep. But you've got Rutherford at the other end. What Moti realizes is he just needs to get one just needs to defend his stumps because there's Rutherford, who is very capable of going big and getting a big score at the other end. So I thought the way he supported Rutherford and gave Rutherford confidence that he didn't necessarily have to hit out because Morty was capable, I thought that in itself was good. In terms of Rutherford, I knew he could bat spin, but I didn't know he could bat spin this well. And I think in the T20 format, he's never really given... A, a lot of deliveries to express himself and what he's been given in these 5-1 internationals is time and I love what he said in the piece that we showed earlier where he's understanding that he has to as absorb pressure on this surface and you look at both games he started slowly because they've lost wickets but then he's caught up so quickly and it's just been by attacking the left arm spinner attacking the shorter boundary it's just been intelligent batting but the way that he's played the spin I mean, better than guys who have played 30 and 41 internationals. It has been very impressive. And I think I would love to see him when that 2027 one the international World Cup comes around to still be in that ODI squad, maybe having played you know, 30 or 40 ODIs and ready sort of finding the prime of his batting, his long form batting, because we know his capabilities in the shorter format. Yeah, and we know from time to time we've seen the kill where the West Indies will come up with a, a winning performance when a series is already over. So hopefully they can win the third ODI because um, points in the matches being played, pretty, pretty important to positioning themselves for qualification to that World Cup tournament that you just referenced. And I think it would be pretty important for the West Indies to come up with a victory in, in this last game. Uh, Lance, a win would be huge for the confidence. I mean, England is a quick turnaround. It's literally in a week and some time. Um, we'll be in Antigua for that first one international. So 
I think a lot of these guys, from what I understand, will be going to play in that England series, if not all of them. It's a big win needed because of the points that you mentioned. They're far behind the West Indies. And people will say, well, look, it's 10 series away for the West Indies that next World Cup. If they don't start winning now, they're going to have to go back to the qualifiers. And we all know how that went last year. So every single one international becomes imperative to try to get a win. And we know what the conditions are going to be like again, spin. So it's up to Floyd Rifa and Sami and the West Indian batters to find a way against the spin because in the first two games, they've had no answers other than Sherfin Rutherford. And today we saw Moti. Yeah, well, Nikhil, I'm looking forward to see how that third ODI goes. Um, thank you so much for stopping by on the Sportsmax Zone. And as usual, I hope you fall asleep. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I didn't fall asleep last time, but <laughs> hopefully this time. <laughs> All right. Take care, Nikhil. Chat again really soon. Nikhil Utam Chandani there, of course, our cricket commentator. And he's even really good at doing those predictions for us when we need him from time to time. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. <laughs>